That concludes our reading of Message to the Black Man in America by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we will now transition over to our Islamic presentations. Do we have any brothers or sisters who would like to present? Yes, sir. We will have the Muhammad children give their Islamic presentations, followed by Sister Rebecca, and we will start with Diane's Islamic presentation. This is Minister Daim of the Nation of Islam, a last number one. I did my Islamic presentation on our video titled War of Christ 2012, Part 4 of 13. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, we are told that no man knows the day or, or the hour of the judgment but God himself. But there was no mention about the year. Uh, turning to the book of Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4, we read, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the day of my redeemed has come. Examining the coming of the year examining the coming of the year of Christ or year of his redeemed, in the study of theology, a day is often a day often means a year in terms of prophecy. For example, in the book of Numbers chapter fourteen, verse thirty four, we we read after the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall be shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. This is the clearest example in the Bible of the, of days equaling years. This is the prophecy of the children of Israel who had to wander the wilderness for forty days or a year for each day they committed offense. Um, getting back to the year of the redeemed, we turn to the book of Revelation where where we read about the where we read about a futuristic Babylon that has fallen and the Lord is calling his redeemed out of it. Starting at chapter 18, verse 2, we read, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And in chapter 14, verse 8, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Here we are given hints from scripture about or concerning the year of the Christ redeemed. It is re it is referencing a future Babylon and it and its fall, but there was there was an ancient Babylon that fell, and the prophet Daniel foretold it. The first Babylon, the kingdom of Assyria, fell in 614 BC. Turning to the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses 10 through 12, we read. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Here in Daniel, we are given the year of the redeemed, which is 1,290 days and 1,335 days. And as we know, these days are referencing to years, are referring to years. This prophecy of Daniel with reference to the first Babylon or ancient Assyria in 614 BC, we see that the year of the redeemed or first beginning year of Christ is 2012. If we add the years the years of the redeemed, 1,335 and 1,290. Uh, this is when adding 1,335 and 1,290, but subtracting 614 because it is before Christ. Concerning the fall of the second ancient Babylon with its fall in 539 BC, we would have to understand the seven years of tribulation or the 70th week of the prophecy of Daniel. Since a week has seven days, 70 weeks is seven years, or this is refer this is referring to the seven years of tribulation. The book of Daniel refers to the seven years of tribulation being broken up in half. One half of it is that 
is that referred to in Daniel, and the other is referred to in the book of Revelation. It, in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 11, it reads, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Um, one thousand two hundred ninety days uh, is one thousand two hundred ninety days is forty three months, which is about half the seven years, which is about half of seven years or eighty four months. So the book of Daniel references half of the seven years as one thousand two hundred and ninety days. Concerning the prophecy of Daniel's 70th week, turning to the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verses 21 through 24, we have, Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, even the, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me, touched me about the time of the e evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me, and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of, it, an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And also in the 27th verse, and he shall confirm the, the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to, to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations shall he shall make it desolate, even until the communication, and that determined shall be shall be poured upon the desolate. Here we see that here we see the angel Gabriel tell Daniel about the time before the appearance of the Most Holy or Christ. In the twenty seventh verse, Daniel tells us that it tell us tells us in the midst or in the middle of the seventieth week. We have an indication of the one who makes desolate or the beast. We are given more insight about the work of the beast and his time during the middle of the seven of the seven years of tribulation. In Revelation chapter thirteen, verse four and five, we have, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is li who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Here the beast is given forty-two months, which is half of the seven years, or eighty-four months. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, Daniel bears the revelator witness concerning those blasphemies. Here we read, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. When the scripture speaks of a time, it is referring to one year or 360 days, and times is two years or 720 days. Half a time is half a year or 180 days, and three and a half times is three and a half years. So, if we reread the scripture with wisdom, and they shall, if we reread the uh, the scripture with wisdom, it reads as, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, 360 days, and time, 720 days, and the dividing of time, 180 days. Adding 360, 720, and 180, we get 1,260 days, or 42 months. Multiplying 30 by 42, we get 1,260 days. The prophet Daniel told us that the beast who... The prophet Daniel told us that the beast would wear out the saints, and the revelator bears some witness in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, and it reads as, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, the kingdom of ancient Babylon fell in 539 B.C.
if we add the quantities of 1,290 years and 1,260 years to 539 BC, we get the sum of the year 2012. Amen. This is Minister Rafiq of the Nation of Islam, Allah Temple number one. And I am presenting on Isaiah chapter 63, Why Art Thou Covered in Blood? The Son of Man Speaks. The Son of Man's motivations for, for speaking to us, the Muhammad children, is us, the Muhammad children. If he didn't have us with him, he doesn't think that he would have taken the route that he would have in terms of teaching. The memories of us expressing gratitude towards the Son of Man for his teachings of Islam and his hearing us teach Islam supports him in making the decision to keep teaching. But as far as the people of this world, the Son of Man is done with them. They rejected the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and they reject the Son of Man, a believer in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, despite the fact that he presents clear evidence in front of them. The Son of Man's four children being with him are like the Son of Man riding four horses. Metaphorically speaking, the Muhammad children can be compared to the four horses of the Apocalypse. As the Holy Quran says, we have made the word to have many connections. And this metaphor may not be in the ultimate sense of the true meaning of the four horses, but there is a comparison to the Son of Man's life to that of the four horses of the Apocalypse, you know, because we are in the Apocalypse. So we call this specific comparison a metaphor and not a divine interpretation. It's more of a hadith. The Son of Man is like Jonas. As he said, he's ready to just get it. There's been a lot of talk and mercy and waiting, and the Son of Man is a man of action. If he had it his way, the judgment would have been passed. In one of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's lectures, he even said that if he had the power, he would have killed you when we're talking about the devil. So even the messenger remarked that he's not as merciful as Allah. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said the following, This is what you must remember. Bear in mind at all times that Jehovah did not drown Pharaoh. He made Moses to do the job. Over in the Bible, Revelation, he did not sound the trumpet himself, but he made an angel to do it. He told the angel where to go and how to stand. You must remember how to understand the theology of God's teachings. You must understand. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said in the theology of time that Jehovah did not drown Pharaoh. He made Moses to do the job. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is quoting biblical history or story or prophecy, making a reference between the story of the children of Israel being in bondage to Egypt and the story of Moses and Jehovah. What we have to keep in mind is that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not waste words. He didn't just say things that didn't have meaning. There's a reason why he said these things. His time was limited and he had to deliver a certain message. In an interview with the Chinese, when the reporters were asking about Master Farad Muhammad and the teachings, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Farad Muhammad gave me a teaching that will last about 40 years. We have to remember that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was wiser than we know. He was wiser than we give him credit for. Anytime a man spends three and a half years with the God of the universe, he is bound to have some insights that we just don't have. So here... He is in the 60s telling the Chinese that he gave me a message that will last about 40 years, and he knows that nobody is paying him any attention. If we were to just do the math, Master Farad Muhammad left in 1934, and 40 years after that is 1974, which was the year that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave his last major lecture to the public. So we treated the messenger like we treat each other. Our words don't mean a lot. A lot. And so when we're listening to him, we regard him like we regard each other, and we don't give his words the due respect that it and we don't give his word the due respect that it deserves, considering that this man sat with God. Amen. This is Minister Kamal Muhammad of the Nation of Islam, Law Temple Number One. The Black Stone in the resurrection of Jehovah. In this lesson, the Son of Man will be teaching you about the true significance of the black stone in Mecca and the pilgrimage of the Hajj that many Muslims partake every year concerning this stone. So let us address the obvious. The situation here is that we have a black stone located in the eastern corner of the Kaaba in Mecca. 
The Kaaba is, is draped in a black and gold embroidered cloth called the Kiswa. The pilgrimage or Hajj involves Muslims who travel from all over the world, making seven circles around the Kaaba, and upon completion of the seven circles, they kiss and blow a kiss at the black stone. What does this stone represent and why are they kissing it? The black stone represents the Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the, the Amen, etc. Who is to be resurrected at the end of the world? The stone is black because this the stone is black because this one that is to be resurrected will be a black man. In the book of Psalms, chapter two, verse twelve, reads, Kiss a son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all that put their blessed are all blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Here the book tells you plainly to kiss the son. As we continue to talk this ritual will become crystal clear, and hopefully it will become crystal clear to the rest of the Muslims that perform this act and have no idea what they're doing. Okay, the book tells you, the book tells you to kiss the sun. Well, who is the sun? If we turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8, it reads, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Say the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. This verse foreshadows that the Almighty was alive, died, and will be resurrected, which lets you understand the verse again, which reads, I am that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And have the keys to hell and death. And I'll be presenting the Black Stone and the Resurrection of Jehovah tomorrow. I mean, next Sunday school. Amen. This is Minister Mahir Muhammad of the Nation of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa I present to you my Islamic presentation on the seventh angel of Saudi, part one of six. And this is part four of back of the beach. Yasu had the societies of doctors, nurses, and free people killing black children. If the baby came out the mother too dark, the baby's brain was pierced with a needle, and the baby was murdered. And the mother was told alive that her child was to have the same room for them. So the child was murdered, murdered, and the mother was rising. Murder and lies. But why? It was to get that white baby. So that germ that was locked in the black man that Yaqub was trying to get out, he got it out of the black man and formed that nation by killing and murdering blacks and lying about it. Also, Yaqub did not have jails on the island of Patches. If you disobeyed him, he killed you. So after 200 years of murder and lying and deception, you got the Japanese, Japanese man. After 200 more years of murder and deception, he got the yellow man, which is the Chinese man. After another 200 years, after murder and deception, which is after 600 years, the white man came through. So in its formation of coming out into the world, it was then other murder and lies, meaning that it's his very nature. Nature, It is a part of from what gives him life. When your, when your nature comes down on you, it's like you're going insane and you can't help yourself. You lie to yourself. You make up all kinds of reasons to justify what you want to do. If you understand that power and that drive, that drives you to reproduce on a man or woman you culturally desire, if you can understand that. While the white man was a born as we all out through the process of sexual intercourse, but during that brings him here, it was done with murder and lies. And I will continue this video next to Ms. Laza Part 5. Amen. This is Minister Rebecca Rockman of the Nation of Islam, Allah's Temple Number One. My today's Islamic presentation is the fall of the fall of America. No, America has fallen. I'm sorry. Part one of part two. In this lecture, the Son of Man has returned to teaching the teaching of Islam 
which he had taken a year off from teaching due to, well, let's say just, just due to divine revelation that had occurred in Virginia, which is another whole lecture in itself. The title of this lecture is America Has Fallen. It begins in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is a key verse to discuss. To be discussed, the Son of Man decodes it like this. The whole of chapter 18 of the book of Revelation concerns the prophecy of America and her fall and destruction. Notice fall and destruction are two separate events. Although the destruction rapidly follows the fall, let's read this verse with clarity. And after these things, I saw another angel come here. The Son of Man announces to us that America has fallen yet. One might ask, what do you mean America has fallen? It's still here. Let's look deeper into what America really is. First, America is millions and millions of years old, and yet it was established in the year of 1776, over 200 years ago. Therefore, America is really a system of laws, practices, and customs. America, in its truest essence, can be examined in the Constitution. So if you want to know what America is or where its power flows from, just look at the Constitution. The word Constitution can also describe the health of a person or their mental strength. The definition of the word Constitution is the physical makeup of the individual, especially with respect to the health, strength, and appearance of the body of the subject. The subject of this lecture, the fall of America, and when one hears the word fall of America, one might think of images like New York City in flames with countries, monuments broken down. This image will not be the fall of America. It is only signals the destruction of America. Destruction will come soon after the fall. Let's talk about a woman. A woman usually has a basic set of virtues, and if you be, if you were to be, you would have, you would have to possess some qualities or virtues that she desires. If you want to be with her, you would have to possess some qualities or virtues that she desires. What happens when a woman will be intimate with anyone, you could say that that woman has fallen. She has no virtues or principles that she believes in. She's just a prostitute or a harlot. What happens to a fallen woman is this. They get diseases, they get beaten, they robbed, hooked on drugs, and even murdered. These are the things that will be the destruction of the fallen woman. When we say that a woman has fallen, we're not saying she's no longer exists or is not alive. This merely means that this woman of no virtue will soon be destroyed. The same with America. She no longer abides by her virtues and principles, which are found in her constitution. Her respect and her recognition of her constitution is eroding rapidly every day. She's abiding less and less by her own constitution, which means that America's constitution is now weak. The front the Fourth Amendment is basically gone. The freedom of the press of this of this um, news media is suppressed. The freedom of speech is now an illusion. The new law, such as the Patriot Act, directly violates her constitution. The constitution is set up solely for the whole for the white people in America to enjoy. Black people in America are not true citizens of America. The Son of Man makes a comment about showing this to us in another video someday as to how we are not citizens of America. For instance, if a black person are not true, for instance, if black people are not true Americans, we, sh we would not need voting rights or civil rights. Also, only a natural born citizen 
of 35 years of age or older can become president of America. As a legal matter, black people are not citizens of America. So the mere fact that we have a black man called the president of the United States shows that America has fallen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rebecca. Yes, sir. Do we have any questions or comments before we close our Sunday school? Well, they come along. Come on, go ahead, uh, speak. Introduction, Rafi. So, uh, we will now hear from the Son of Man. In the name of Allah, who appeared and is in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum How's everyone doing? Good. Good. That's good. I have a few things I want to uh, say to you today. I'm uh, currently working. And so if the phone cuts out, um, I'm going to have to call back. I guess that will bring me to the first minor point I want to bring up real quick. When you um, have a, a responsibility or a post, let's take Rafiq for example. Rafiq is the moderator of this meeting. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, a couple of things I'm gonna point out. When you are the when you are given a post by a commanding officer or your superior, like if you're in the military, if you if you have the post, you take charge of that post. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, so for instance, let me go back. There is a famous uh, Oriental uh, general by the name of Sun Tzu. I think I shared this story before, but I'm going to reshare it again. Uh, Sun Tzu, you know, uh, he, he wrote, there's a book of his teachings or philosophy called The Art of War. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, story goes, Sun Tzu was, was at a certain Chinese emperor's court, and he was you know, being, um, what you call, evaluated or examined by the court and the king as to his fitness to be the general. So, you know, as a joke of sorts, the emperor told Sun Tzu, you know, you know he wanted to test his wisdom of being a, a, a general. And he said, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing because I don't have the book in front of me. But basically, he said, if you can take my harem of women and make the, make a make an army out of them, I'll give you the job. Or you, you'll you command my army. If you can take these women and make an army out of them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Sun Tzu accepted the challenge. All right. So the king is up high somewhere, eating grapes, looking down. and we're just going to say about 100 or 200 of the king's harem came out, and Sun Tzu and his confidants were out there with the women. And so Sun Tzu was, you know, he, out of the women, he selected a few of them to be, um, what's the word, uh, lieutenants, or, you know, he made some of the, he made three or four of the women or whatever in charge of the women. So, you know, if he gave a command, you know, they, you know, it was like a, a, a chain of command. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. So he told the he told all the women. He said when if you hear the, when you hear the drum, when you hear one beat of the drum, you ought to face left. If you hear two beats of the drum, I'll paraphrase, but this is basically the story. If you hear two beats of the drum, face right. And if you hear three beats, about face. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so yeah, he, he put them in formation. He lined them up. And so he gave a signal to the uh, to his officer. Officer beat the drum. Well, it's, you know, when they were supposed to go left, some of them went right. They went the opposite direction and started laughing and giggling. 
And so what Sun Tzu did, he um he said, Well maybe you misunderstood me. He said, When you hear one beat of the drum, I want you to turn left. And when you hear two beats of the drum, I want you to turn right. If you hear three beats of the drum, I want you to bow face. Okay? All right. So he repeated the instruction and he gave a signal to his officer. The drum was beaten. And the women were still laughing and giggling and playing. Okay, now, at this point, it was established. Now, this is not in the book. This is me talking. Sun Tzu knew at this point it was established. There was no misunderstanding because he repeated the order. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And when he repeated the order, they all said they understood him. Right? Yes, sir. All right. Now. Remember, it was the emperor that constricted his harem to the charge of a military general. It was the emperor that put his women in the military. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Listen carefully. Sun Tzu is a military general there to, you know, um, be conferred power to preside over the emperor's military. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. That's the situation. Now, when the women disobeyed Sun Tzu, he told one of the officers to grab the, the, that rival lieutenant and chop her head off. So the officer went and snatched the woman, and the king stood up, or the emperor stood up in the balcony and said, wait a minute. Um, he said, don't kill her. Uh, I love the way she peels my grapes. And he, and he started kind of, it was a joke to him. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Sun Tzu told the emperor, he told the king, in the field of battle, the general has sovereignty. He does not have to give regard to the to the uh to he does not have to give regard to the orders of the sovereign in the field of battle. He has prerogative. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then he told the commander chop her head off. The commander chopped the woman's head off. The emperor stood silent. He then called another woman and made her lieutenant. And said again, when you hear the drum beat once, face left. When you hear the drum beat twice, face right. If you hear the drum beat three times, about face. When the officer beat the drum, the, every last woman in that harem moved with absolute military precision. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And Sun Tzu was made the general. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Often when I'm talking to my children, you know, when they talk to me, like Rafi, he may ask me a question. And uh, my uh, friendly... You know, nurturing father uh, persona disappears, and it gets a little. It gets. I get a little stern. I say, I will tell him some like reread what I wrote you, or I may say, didn't I tell you that before? Do you understand? Yes, sir. So when Rafi deal with me, it's like, well, y'all deal with dad, but you know, sometimes talking with dad, he gets kind of grim. Do you understand? Yes, sir. My word is not to be taken lightly. Understood? Yes, sir. But back to the general. So Rafi is the moderator of this meeting. That means if, this, if I am cut off from the meeting, my seat is in charge, meaning, okay, we're going to wait for the Son of Man to call back in. And if I take too long, 
He has the authority to say, you know what, we're going to go ahead and end the meeting. Amaria gives you prayer. Do you understand? Yes, sir. This is military. We take the word, the, the word of a man is to be taken seriously. Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's the lesson. It is from a remote position. It is a little more difficult for me to make men out of my son. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. But, but when Allah avails them to a certain side of me, that's Allah's way of assisting me in making men out of my son. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. The way my children act, a lot of things, how they, how they carry themselves, they, I, I give them a little slack because I am not there. And they are in the hall with a woman, their mother. So they're going to have certain ways. And I have to pardon that. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But make no mistake, I'm making men out of my son. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you all understand? Only our right feet. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, one moment. All right. Now, that's not what I want. <laughs> I tell you. Anyway, let me get to the point. Let me get to what I want to talk about. Listen. Listen. Oh, I want to address this. It has come to my attention that one of my, like that Rafiq, you know, I don't know if he, how diligent he is. I'm not there looking at him. But Rafiq takes notes of the Sunday school, to my knowledge. That's what he's been telling me. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I remember giving instruction to my children, you know, Y'all should get five subject notebooks. You should take notes. Now, I'm I'm kind of sure that all of them are not doing that. They may, but I doubt it. And that's okay. That's, and that's what I mean. You know, I'm not exactly there. You know, so when I say do something, they don't do it. Certain things, I kind of know I'm not being – and, and I just – I'm hard in that. You know, I, I'm not trying to be a, um, a tyrant because if you place, if you place your children – or somebody supporting to you in a certain environment that does not um, promote your way, then you have to, uh, you know, you have to exhibit patience and mercy. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm not a tyrant. I'm a very, uh, I'm a very fair person. I remember I had a fifth grade teacher, never will forget him, named Mr. Williams. And uh, first day of class, I was in elementary school, though. First day of class, Mr. Williams told us. He said, look, he said, I'm hard, but I'm fair. Meaning he was talking about that battle. And he had a reputation throughout, you know, the school. I was, you know, I was going to Brady Elementary. What was it? Clint, Clint Elementary, Detroit. Everybody knew about Mr. Williams and that paddle. And the first day he told us, he said, I'm hard, but I'm fair. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And I, bear, and I bear witness. That panel, did, I mean, that panel did not come out unless you broke one of the rules. He was serious about what he said. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You know, our children today don't get that kind of discipline. And that's why, you know, our babies are acting the way they are. You know, rebelliousness, you know, uh, claiming they don't know if they're a man or a woman. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But tell you something, these these black children, you know, I see them all the time in Walmart, at all ages. I'm talking about from little boys on up, switching, looking like, you know, acting like a little girl, you know, trans, uh, what they call them, transgender. You know, yes, sir. these you know these these children acting like this. You know, the problem is. 
And I agree. I, I, I really don't think they know if they're a, a, a boy or a girl. And the reason why they don't know is because there's not a father in the home that's putting that fire on their behind. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So, you know, I, hey, maybe I'm a girl. You know, they, there's no consequences. Switching and putting on makeup and, you know, dressing like an abomination. You know, there's no daddy in the house. Put a little fire on your behind. I promise you. I promise you. I tell you, my stepdad, he was a lot of things, but boy, man, when he got to beat me, man, I had to strip. I mean, I, I got it, man. Man, when I got whipped, man, I got whipped. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And it didn't stop at the house when I went to elementary school. And if I fell out of one of my teachers, they had paddles. All that discipline and structure has been taken away today. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Setting our babies and children up for the fire. That's what the devil is doing. Oh, you, you're part of the LGBTQWXYZ community. Now they're a community. You know, all this foolishness. Because they have taken the men out of the home. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. So anyway, but that's not that's not actually uh, my subject. Get back. Uh-uh. Excuse me. Now, let's get back to the black woman. Let's get back. What have I, what have I repeatedly told you about the black woman or the woman in general? The greatest way to learn of your nation is through the study of their woman. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good attempt. I mean, I, I think I may have said that. What I've said repeatedly about black, the answer that I'm looking for, not that that's not the answer, not the answer I'm looking for. I said there's great wisdom locked up inside the black woman or the woman. There's great wisdom that you can get by studying her. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. Talk about it. Now, women. And so women have a, what you would call, I mean, anybody can be fooled. Don't get me wrong. But in general, women have a radar, an emotional radar. And they're, they're, they're naturally very good at detecting when a man actually likes them or loves them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. They can they can detect it. They're they're real good at it. They're better I would say they're better at, at it in practice than we than us men. Do you understand? Yes, sir. In other words, you know, she can kinda of feel it. You know, she you know, if you tell a woman, Hey baby, I love you uh, you know, she can she can she can you know, women can read you. They know if you love me or you want something or, you know, you, they can, you know, they're pretty good at it. I mean, you know, anybody can get fooled. And some women, and, you know, women do get fooled in the game of love. But basically, they can feel you out. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. If you study, I, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I will say this. The path to divine power goes directly through studying your woman or the black woman. You want to be a king or emperor. You want to be a universal ruler. And you want to walk that path to reach that goal. Inevitably, you will go through the study of your own woman to get there. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I do, you know, driving driving this truck and being in the uh, being in the industry that I'm in, I have a lot of time to think. You know, when I'm on when I'm done loading, getting on the road, give me a lot of time to reflect on things. And 
everything this is from a personal um a personal observation that I've come to. Everything that has happened in my life, and I mean everything, all the setbacks, all the accomplishments, disappointments, everything, everything that's taken place in my life uh, is for a reason. There's nothing that's happening in my life that happens by chance. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Because I'm working, because I am walking a certain path. You know, there's an old saying, I believe it's written in the Bible, all things work for the glory of God. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And when, and when, when, uh, when God, and when you are a man of God, that is profoundly true. You know, everything. Had I not ex- had the experiences that I had, marriage, divorce, away from my children. If I wouldn't experience if I wouldn't experience and suffer things, I would not I can't tell you matter of fact, I I'm just gonna say it. I would not have the wisdom that I have. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I mean what if I would have had the perfect marriage? I mean what if that would have happened perfectly? I mean, you know, I never did anything to uh to my wife to break her peace, anything, and she never did. You know, if everything was absolutely perfect, then how in the world could I grow into the wisdom concerning the women that I have if I had not suffered? What do I mean, suffer? You know. Well, depending, you know, let me put it like this. There's an old wise saying that when a person that you love dies, that's when the, the true depth of the bond of that's when you truly feel the depth of the bond you have with that person. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And when you are when you are a righteous man, despite your mistake, when you are separated from your wife and your children, and they're no longer in your life, that's a form of death. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You know, you know, one will inevitably or probably encounter suicidal thoughts if he loses. I'm not even talking about through death. I'm talking about through divorce and whatnot. If you losing your wife, losing your wife and children is pretty traumatic. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And a man that loves his family, that is a great suffering. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And when you suffer, it will inevitably cause you to reflect and think about things and consider things and reconsider them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, the path of wisdom, which I did not know, (laughs) the path of wisdom often the, the the road travails through great suffering to to attain it. Understood? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's why if you were smart or wise children, when you come to these meetings, you should have a pen and paper or, you know, if you don't want, if you just want to listen, you don't want to write at during the live meeting. You should go back and listen to the recording with a pen and paper and jot notes. When I when I say notes, not necessarily. I mean, you can transcribe it, but a note is something that that you hear or observe that truly stands out, that causes you to say, "Huh," and you just write. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You don't write a note, really, on something you already know or something you you already understand. You kind of make a note on something that's pretty interesting that you didn't think about or a new way of thinking about. It's called a note. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You know, what you must realize is I'm 46 years old, and y'all just got here. 
And so all my experiences and lessons that I have learned and the, and the trials and tribulations I've been through, why not learn and absorb all of that and avoid all of my mistakes? Is that not intelligent? Yes, sir. It makes no sense to suffer when you don't have to. It makes no sense to go to Kenny Hawk, North Carolina, and try to make an airplane and die trying to fly when you can just go to pilot school and enroll and learn how to fly. Why make the mistakes of the Wright brothers or the early people trying to fly? Why go die and why go suffer when the way has been established? That's not intelligent. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So when you go to flight school to learn to fly, you get a book. You go to go to the store and get a notebook, ink pens, and you go to class and you sit in a nice, comfortable chair and take what notes? Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only a fool will go outside on a cliff or whatever, grab a bicycle or whatever, and try to make an airplane when the path is already here. You're wasting time doing that and suffering unnecessarily. That's very foolish. Understood? Yes, sir. So if if Allah has shown love to you to place before you a teacher, a minister, to share with you the truth and wisdom of God and of life, it behooves you. And it's most intelligent on your part at some point to take notes and to read your notes and, 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 and think about what you're being told. I'm not up here wasting words. I am not up here to hear myself speak. I don't have self-esteem problems. Meaning, you know, I, I mean, I, I I just never had low self esteem in my life. I remember when I was in Arizona when I was in around 2007 or sometime in there, listening to these college educated people, doctors and whatnot, get on stage and and so many words saying they didn't become somebody till they got their PhD. Do you understand? Yes, I was already somebody before I got my, my bachelor, my master's, and my juris doctorate. I was already somebody. I didn't need to go to college to, to respect myself. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I don't feel like I have arrived because I got college degrees. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Hold on one Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um. Oh, okay. I don't forget. Okay. Let me get back to my point. Uh. I don't know how I got. I don't know how I got over here. <laughs> I don't know how I got on this subject. That's not what I wanted to talk about. I don't know how I got over here. <laughs> let me get back. Let me get back to the point I was trying to make about the uh the path going through the woman and feelings and that kind of thing. I don't know how I got over here. Anyway, I guess because I'm driving, I got a little distracted. I don't know. But I, I didn't mean to go this far off the path of what I wanted to tell you. So anyway, women are equipped to, um, you know, they have like natural radar. They, they're, they're pretty much, 
they can get, have a good sense of feeling. And, you know, uh, they got they just got that that sick, that that certain emotional uh, sensitivity concerning people and situations. They're, they're just naturally equipped with it. Understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Now, let's take let's 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 go to an example. Now, let's say that Kamal. Let's say that I didn't know that Kamal was my son. Let's, for somehow I didn't know that. And let's say that Kamal did not know I was his dad. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's say let's say Kamal got a stepfather. All right. So <laughs> this is going to be a pretty interesting example. All right, so I'm a truck driver. I don't know who Kamal is. Kamal don't know who I am. You know, for some reason, I, I never knew about Kamal. Kamal's in Walmart with his stepdad. I I pull up in my, in my truck, park it, and I walk in the same way. I'm in Opelousas. I'm passing through Opelousas. Now, let's say that um, Kamal acts as stepfather he picks up a lollipop or a pack of gum or a candy bar. And he says, Dad, can I have a candy bar? And his stepfather snatched the candy bar and, and snatched it from him and throw the candy bar back on the rack and said, No, you can't have it. I told you don't be asking me for that. Don't don't ask me for nothing else. Right? Yes, sir. And, and Kamal kinda of hangs his head and says, Yes, sir. And you you can visibly tell he's real scared of his stepdad or his well, everybody thinks it's daddy, but, you know, it's, he's scared of his stepdad. Is that right? Yes. Now, if I don't know that Kamal is my son, and Kamal, I, and Kamal don't know I'm his dad, this is scenario A. If I don't know that Kamal is my son and I see that, what do you think my emotional reaction would be to seeing that? Anybody? Yeah. You're not worried about it. Who said that? Come on. Not worried about it. Anybody else? No one else got nothing to say. That's that's pretty much it. Like you're just not worried about it. Because that's not your it's, son. It's not. It's not. It's not a question of worry. The question you gotta listen. You gotta listen close. I said, what do you think my re- emotional response would be? Well, oh. let me get to the point. Since you don't, I mean, if you don't have an answer, that's fine. I don't want you to say. If if, if you have nothing to say, then it's intelligent not to speak. That's and that's fine with me. If I see that, that basically, that's just a little boy in a store with his dad, and. You know, I really would probably wouldn't care either way. Like, boy, he, this, that boy must have did something, or that guy sure is mean. But probably would see it and keep walking to the back of the back of the store and grab a gallon of milk or whatever out there, get and leave. One thing twice about it. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's scenario A. Let's go to scenario B. Let's say. Kamal's in that same store with his stepdad or mama, boyfriend, whoever he is. I know Kamal, and Kamal know me, but Kamal don't know I'm in the store. And I walk in Walmart, and my son asks this man, stepdad or guardian, mama, boyfriend, uh, can I have a candy bar? Can I have a piece of gum? And that man snatch the gum of candy from my son's hand, throw it in the rack, puts his finger in his face, and I don't ask him that no more. Well, and, and does the same thing. What do you think my emotional response would be? Anger. The, the, the exact same situation. The only difference is I'm aware that that's my son over there. What do you think my emotional response should be? Well, no, not should be, would be. What do you think my how do you think I will respond? You will probably put your hands on the subject. I can't or, hear you. What'd you say? 
I would probably do what? You would probably you'd be mad. So you probably I'll be, you either I would be I would be mad. Keep going. Anything else? I'll be mad. Anything else? You would beat him up. You you would buy the I beat him up. Well that'll mar you something. I beat him up. That's right, baby. Dad will beat him up. Any, anything else? You will buy the candy bar for his son, or you will put your hands on the stuff that. Buy the candy and put my hands on it, right? Yes, sir. So, in the two scenarios, the, under the same exact facts, the same thing happened, but in two different scenarios. In one scenario, I was looking to keep going to get a, go get a, a bottle of milk and get back in my truck and keep moving. The other scenario, he goes to the hospital and the police is at Walmart investigating a possible homicide, right? Yes, sir. What was the difference between a gallon of milk and a homicide? What was, if we had to put into a couple words, what was the basic difference in those two scenarios under the same fact that was the difference between a purchase of the purchase of a gallon of milk and that step that purchase of a butt kicking. What was the difference? What was, what was in a few words the big difference? Knowledge. Well, knowledge. Huh? Knowledge. Is that right? Yes, sir. Who, who else was about to say something? Oh, I had said wisdom like uh, before that, but it, it doesn't really matter. Now, let's wish. Okay. Now, so what we're talking about is what? Emotion. Is that right? Yes, sir. The knowledge of who's who determines the emotional and physical response to the exact same situation. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If Kamal is my son, then Kamal is a descendant of mine. He's really just an extension of myself. He has my he has a copy of my DNA. He's a little version of me. He's a little Kevin. He's junior. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Listen to me carefully. Now remember, before we went into this, before we went into this, uh, that example, I was telling you about women. Is that right? Yes, sir. And how they can, how they can, the feeling, right? Yes, sir. And I was talking to you about divine power. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. So, if you if you tell a woman. Let's call her name. Let's say her name is Jackie. We're talking about. We're talking about. We're talking about emotional power and feelings. And I say to Jackie, uh, Jackie, I love you. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Jackie may not be feeling that, or she may not believe it. But then I say, I say these words. Excuse me, I say these words. I say, I say, Jack, Jack, baby, I love you. Right? Yes, sir. Coming coming from the heart. Is that right? Yes, sir. But let's get back to Kamal and the knowledge of self. The difference between the responses of physical force and emotion was simply knowledge. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, Sister Rebecca should be able to answer this, but y'all may be able to answer it, depending on how closely. You have to really be paying attention to the teaching that I've been teaching the last four years to answer this correctly. When the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, accept your own, what did he mean when he said, accept your own and be yourself. But in particular, what did the messenger, what was the messenger referring to 
when he said, accept your own, anybody. Accept yourself for who you are. Accept yourself for who you are, anybody else? So is that it? Accept your emotions. Come again? Accept your emotions. Accept your emotions. Okay. Y'all don't know. Accept your own people. Mm, mm, that's not that's not the answer. Now, this is the answer. That's why that's why this answer was given before, probably a couple of years ago. And if you were taking notes a couple of years ago and wrote it down in your book in your own personal book of wisdom, you would know. Now, so I'm gonna say it again. When the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, let me say this. <laughs> Look. I know Master Farad Muhammad is not talking to you in person. I know that. I know you're on the mother plane. I know this. But, you know, I'm repeating his teachings. And it would just be intelligent on your part. If you hear me, if, when you hear me sharing things that Master Farad Muhammad said through his messenger, I mean, just because I'm repeating it, don't, it's the same thing as hearing it from him. He said it. And if he said it, it's, it's very, very important. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The, what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that when he said, when he was asked, or it came up, he said to accept your own, hold on. Well, that was it. Yeah, I keep him. I keep him. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay. Are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, something. Was, yes, sir. There was what? Something was happening in the phone. It was like there were other people talking in the phone. No, someone was. I'm, I'm at work. So somebody, somebody had to get my attention. Oh, One see. moment. Yes, sir. Let's see Are you there? Yes, sir. All right, hold on. All right. Okay. It's, okay, I know where I'm going. So when the so when the most honorable Elijah when our, when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, "Accept your own and be yourself," when he was asked or when he explained your own, to accept your own means this: your own is the sun moon, and star. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Your own, yes, sir. Is ev your own is everything that exists, the universe. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, when, so when you hear the teaching or you hear a Muslim say, accept your own and be yourself, those are general answers of people that really don't study the uh, 
accept black people. Uh, accept yourself. Uh, accept, accept, accept the black man. No, no, no. Specifically, it means to accept your own means to accept the sun, moon, and star. Everything, in other words, the universe and everything that exists. That's your own. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. And I want you to pay attention. And if you're not taking notes, you know, uh, you need to make some notes later. You just want to sit there and listen. Now, let's talk a moment. Let's talk a moment. You know, <laughs> one moment. Now, the teachings is our own is the sun, the moon, and the star. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, watch this. We're going we're going to go back to Kamal in this example. Remember when I was in the store and I seen that man mistreating Kamal, and I didn't yes, know yes. that he was, and I didn't know he was my son. I was really indifferent about it. Didn't really feel a lot, and went on about my business. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. There was there was no feeling there. I was not. It, it just didn't mean nothing to me because I was not conscious or aware or accepted the fact that, hey, that's my son over there. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so it didn't mean a lot to me. There was no pride or love kindled within me when Kamal was being mistreated because of the lack of knowledge. Is that right? Yes, sir. Listen yes, to sir. my words. This is one of the greatest lessons you're ever going to get from me. And listen to me very, very carefully. Now, I want you to think about something. Who created the heavens and the earth? Uh -huh. Who created the birds and the bees? A lot. A lot. A lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of spook, or there's a lot, of, or is a lot of man. I'm a man. All right. Let's. One moment. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's say that I died. Okay, and last time my children seen me, I had a um, I had a silver bracelet on my wrist, and on my right hand I had a ring with the symbol with the word Allah in Arabic on it. Right? Yes, sir. All my children seen it. Now, let's say that I die. Okay. Dad, dad, died, dad died. It may have been years ago. But let's say Amaria was in a pawn shop one day, and um, she went to the pawn shop with her mother. Or she went to the pawn shop with with uh, Diane. And she walks in the pawn shop, and she sees a ring. Just like her daddy, just like her daddy used to wear. Is that right? Yes, sir. And next to the ring, she sees a a silver uh, diamond encrusted bracelet. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that that bracelet you seen on my wrist. Those are real diamonds. That's not fake diamonds. Those, that's a real, uh, genuine silk, pure silver bracelet with uh, diamonds. That ain't, that ain't keeping the corny on my hand. That's a diamond. But anyway, Omaria sees the diamond bracelet. Her dad was saw a diamond bracelet that looked like her dad and a, and a ring that looked just like her dad. And she calls, she says, Diane. She says, she says, look, that's dad's ring and dad's bracelet. Is that right? Yes, sir. And... She don't even look at the price. 
She don't even care what the price is. She's going to get that bracelet in that ring. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Why? Because it belonged to her father. father. It belongs to it belongs to her father. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. And even though the pawn shop has possession over that diamond bracelet and ring, as far as Amari is concerned, that's her bracelet and that's her ring. Ain't nobody gonna get it for her. She's gonna get that ring and bracelet no matter what. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? The love for her father. Because she has knowledge of what that means and what it is. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She knows by right that is hers. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And she's going to get it. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Listen to me very carefully. And you don't have to get in the car or catch the plane to even do this. You know, I do a lot of traveling. You know, a lot of times when I travel, you know, it take me down roads, and what I see for miles and miles is nothing but land. But between me and the road and all that land is a fence. Sometimes behind a the fence there are cows and horses and different animals. And they're grazing, right? Yes, sir. And that cattle and all of that stuff belongs to some white man or some company that's either a dairy farmer or or, or, or beef producer. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Listen to me very carefully. If you walk outside, I mean, literally, walk outside right now. As soon as you walk out the door and you walk in the grass and you stop walking and you bend down, and let's say you pull a piece of grass from the ground, one one little piece of grass, is that right? Yes, sir. When you pull that piece of grass out of the ground, who made that grass? Allah. Who decided that that piece of grass would be green? Allah. Who decided that that blade of grass would be approximately a quarter inch in width? Allah. Understand something. We are just talking about a simple piece of grass that's really worth nothing. But if we go outside and bend down a piece and pull up and pluck one piece of grass, we know that a lot of things. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, we are like the man that walked in Walmart and seen Kamal being mistreated by another man. And since Kamal doesn't belong to you, not your son, you go about your business, go get your milk, and don't even think twice about it. Is that right? Yes, sir. Because you don't have a knowledge of who Kamal is. Is that right? Yes, sir. But what did the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teach us? What did Master Farah Muhammad tell us? He told us, that Allah, every time you look at the black man, you're looking at Allah. He told us that God is a man. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said that the sun, moon, and star belong to you and me. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you ain't got to look at no other body on planet Earth. You can just look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and look at and, and ask yourself, and put your hand on your heart and ask yourself this question. I am 16, 18, 65, 12, 14 years old, and I've been walking around this planet for that many years, and I have no pride even in a blade of grass that one of my black fathers made. Do you understand? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But guess what? Every blade of grass on planet Earth was made by Allah, was made by your black fathers. Every single blade of grass. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. But what? We don't have pride because we don't have knowledge of self. So when you get in the car with your mama and you drive to Disneyland and you drive about casinos, hotels, restaurants, farms, you get on a cruise ship and go to Mexico and you own all of that water and you pay your ticket, you are dead. You are asleep. You have no feeling because you don't feel that that ocean is actually yours. You don't even feel that the blade of grass that you play soccer on actually belongs to you. You think it belongs to the white man, the stepfather. So you don't care what the white man do with your earth. You don't care how many bombs he drop on your planet. You don't care how many of your people that he kill. You don't care how much of your air that he pollutes. You don't care how much of your water he poisons. You don't care of how much of your food that he poisons. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you when you drive from Opelousa to Bad Rouge to see your grandmother, and you drive past some horses and cows, or you see a whole bunch of land, you feel nothing. Because you said, well, that belongs to somebody rich or somebody well-to-do. You feel nothing. You don't say that all this stuff is mine and that this white man has it like that pawn shop. All this stuff is mine. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you don't have nothing. Matter of fact, the white man got you so messed up that you're happy and satisfied to live in a mobile trailer home or to be renting a room in a white man's house. Is that right? Yes, sir. You live in a trailer. You don't have no horses, no cows. You own no land. You pay them. You pay a mortgage to a white bank. You own nothing. But your father made everything. Is that right? Yes, sir. Let me bring it all home to you. What if you came home and a police officer or the mailman comes to deliver the mail, or to say something to you. And when he extends his hand, you see your father's silver bracelet on his hand. You see your father's Islamic ring on his finger. And he has it. Don't you know within yourself, hey, man, that belongs to, that was my dad. That belongs to me. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if, and if you know that, then subconsciously you know that you you up there trying to figure out some kind of way. You can you say within yourself, how in the world can I get that ring and that bracelet from that man? That's mine. I gotta get it. So you start sleeping and pondering and having a meeting. You, you put the PlayStation down. And you have a meeting with your brother and sister, we got to figure out how to get dad's ring and brace. That's ours. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of a sudden, those games don't mean a lot to you. So when Diane comes over from high school, he's not in the mood to play Call of Duty. Rafi's not in the mood to play Fortnite. Come on, really don't feel like playing soccer. Because the police officer is wearing my dad ring and bracelet, and we don't have it. I'm depressed. Is that right? 
Yes, sir. Mom, I'm coming home from work. Hey, everybody, I made I made some carrot cake. I made some spaghetti. I made your favorite dinner. I'm not hungry, Mama. I'm mad. I don't even want to eat. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's because you have become a lie. That's because you have become toxic. And you have become serious. Because on some level within your heart, you know that you got to go to war. On some level, you got to get that ring and that. You are mad and it's war. On some level, it may not be with a gun. You may have to scheme, connive, trick, buy it, but you got to get that ring. You think everything in your life has changed. You ain't you ain't you ain't playing no more games no more until this business gets settled. Is that right? Yes, sir. This is our planet. See, let me tell you something. If you really had the teachings of Islam in your heart, what I mean is, if the teachings of Islam start to flower or to mature in your brain, all these toys, all the devil's toys will be less appealing to you. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You don't ever catch a, you don't ever, you don't ever catch a son of man playing a PlayStation. You don't ever catch a son of man at a club dancing and shaking his booty. You don't catch a son of man going to no proms either. At the white man's gym, in the white man's car. This world, this whole thing is upside down. You become a man, you become a woman, you get serious. Is that right? Yes, sir. You live, I don't own a home. You live in a trailer, and a whole planet belongs to us, but because we are not conscious of that, we go on, we go on with our lives like a, a, a father sees his son at Walmart, don't know who he is, and we don't get mad. We're not upset. Matter of fact, we're just fine to see see all this stuff going on. The only thing we can think about is going in there to get our candy, our milk, our business, get back and go about our things. We feel nothing. Is that right? Yes, sir. A person that feels nothing for no one else is what we call a cadaver, a dead man, somebody in the graveyard. People in the graveyard feel nothing for no one else. Do you understand? Yes, sir. They feel nothing for no one else and no thing. They don't care about what happens to their house or their car or their dog and cat after they die. They feel nothing because they are dead. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The black man, the black woman in America is dead. D-E-A-D, dead. We feel nothing. But I am not a dead man. Behold, I am alive. When I'm driving cross country, like I am right now, when I see that cow behind that fence eating that grass, I know that all this stuff is mine. I shouldn't have to beg and work 80 hours a week and maybe be able to buy a piece of land and and maybe a cow. All this stuff is mine and ours. But we have nothing. I know that a black man actually created and designed that cow to chew grass. He made a brown cow to chew green grass and give you white milk. That's God. That's my daddy. My dad made that cow. My dad made this plate of grass. My dad made that soccer field. My dad made the material, the wood, the iron, the tin to put those rides at Disneyland. That's the white man. Everything this white man got, everything he got from my daddy, all this stuff is mine. Do you understand? Yes, sir. old white man come up to you. Hey, come on, you want to learn how to box? Hey, you want to play for my soccer team? Hell no, devil. <laughs> this is war. You got time you playing no games? Do you understand? 
Yes, sir. But this kind of heart, this comes with time. This comes through, this kind of maturity comes through suffering. It's hard to get to this point if you have never suffered, if life is easy for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. I am not condemning the lifestyle that your mother has provided for you. You do not have to suffer to have maturity and to get right. But what I am saying, you you must get serious about your study of Islam and the world around you in your comfort. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And in your comfort, you must become uncomfortable. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got a comfortable life. It's peaceful, but it ain't great. <laughs> I shouldn't just have one car outside. I should have, I can have 20 or 50 cars outside. Why am I satisfied with one car? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why don't, why don't my mother work at a black hospital owned by black people? Why does my mother work at a white hospital under white people. We should not be okay with that, but we are. We don't even think about it because the devil has rocked us to sleep. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rocking us to, rocking us to sleep so he can kill us all. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The black man and woman are dead children in America. Who do you think the devil's talking about in his nursery nursery rhyme? Rock a bye, baby, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Now comes the cradle, baby, and all. Is that right? Yes, sir. You think the devil's talking about his own children? He's talking about you. You the baby that's you the baby that's rocking in the cradle on a flimsy tree with the bow about to break in the day of judgment, asleep. And if you don't wake up in time, a storm's gonna come through and break that tree. And if you sleep in that cradle, you're gonna fall to the ground to the devil's joy and die. Rock a bye, baby. That's you. Rock a bye, baby. Walking around planet Earth, don't own no land. Don't own nothing. Not even a toothpick factory. And think that think that's okay. Walking around dead, asleep. That's you and me. Or you. I'm not claiming that no more. I'm woke. Like I told my children yesterday through a message, I said everything about to change. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rock about baby on the tree, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down comes the baby cradle and up. What the hell? Have you ever thought about that? Anybody? Has anybody in here ever really thought about that nursery rhyme before I taught on it right now? No, no sir. No. Given the explanation that I've just given you, aren't you a little scared or a little concerned that I never thought about that? Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a reminder that you got to get serious. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me explain something to you. This is the war of Christ, the war. Do you know that these devils or civilization of this world do you know they have fought some war, wars for 10 years, and they even had a 100-year war? Do you understand? 
Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. The war of Allah, the war of Christ, the war of Armageddon is not a fist is not a a not a fist fight after school at three o'clock. That's not a war. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. A war is a drawn out struggle with battles. Not a, it's not a street fight with your enemy at high school, at the school at 3 o'clock. That's not a war. That's a fight. This is the war of Christ. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what is the war of Christ? The war of Christ is this. The Christ consciousness that is present in me and present in you is seeking to wake up. Even though you were told by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that accept your own and be yourself, that the black man is God, that Allah is a man, that your fathers made the earth, that the sun, moon, and star belong to you, even though you were told these things, you are still not feeling it. You don't feel it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's like a woman. If I don't convince this woman that I love her, no matter how many times I say it, she will not marry me. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have to truly love her. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I can say all the right words. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a perfect example. I'll use your mother. She's a perfect example. Watch this. Let's pretend your mother's there listening, right? But me and your mother not getting together. We're divorced. But I know the word. Watch this. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Goober. How you doing? Oh, you look, oh, oh Sonny, you look lovely today. I love your hair. Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, Sonny, can I have a hug? Oh, baby. I know the words. But if she don't believe it, it counts for nothing. I will not get your mother. I will not get the girl if I can't make her believe it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. It must be in your heart. When you say that the earth is mine, you can't be a, a father in Walmart looking at Kamal. You got to really believe, wait a minute, that's my son. That's really mine. And this man is mistreating my son. And I'm angry. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You got to wake up and stop letting the devil rock you to sleep. How does the devil rock you to sleep? Tonight on ESPN, we got LeBron James versus versus the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry. Tiger Woods will be playing in the 2019 Masters. Will Tiger Woods win? Hey, have you heard the new rap song by Cardi B? Rocking you to sleep. Under, every example I just gave you has nothing to do with you waking up to, wait a minute, this is upside down. The whole planet in the universe is mine and I got nothing. My mama working for the white man. This ain't right. But if you let this devil rock you to sleep, if you don't wake up, Sometimes when you sleep, you got to fight to get up. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So sometimes when you wake up from school, you don't feel like getting up, and you will fall right back to sleep. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Diane, Rafiq gets up from school. Diane sleep. Rafiq gets up. Hey, to, hey bro, get up time for school. Diane says, okay. Diane's so tired. Rafiq goes to the bathroom, comes back. Diane sleep again. I mean, back to sleep. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to fight to get up. Rafiq can't get you up. You got to say, you know, I was open. I got to say, wait, let me sit. I may, not, I may not stand up, but let me sit up and shake this sleep off because I got to go to school today. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to fight. You got to 
don't wake up. You got to study the teachings of Islam. You got to start thinking for yourself. This is not a game. The, the ice is melting in the north and the south. The ice caps are melting. You get 90 degree weather in February in Louisiana. The weather's bad. You got crop losses and cattle losses in the Midwest. Famine is coming. You got to wake up. You got to really believe in your heart that Allah does love me. Allah does protect me. And this earth really is mine. And I am not satisfied with nothing. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The white man has made our people fools. You can look it up on YouTube. The white man has black people singing songs like, I got plenty of nothing, and nothing's plenty for me. Ain't that right, Sister Rebecca? That's right. Am I lying? No, sir. Did you all, did everybody in the room just hear what I said, what our people used to sing? Yes, sir. Well, I yes, think sir. you heard me. I got plenty of nothing, and nothing is plenty for me. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's, that's a nursery rhyme. Rock a baby in a treetop. I got plenty of nothing, and nothing's plenty for me. Do you realize if you keep singing that song, it will go into your subconscious. And once your subconscious accepts that, your subconscious will manifest that in your life. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Just like a woman. If I can convince Sandra, your mother, that I love you, I love you, I love you, if I tell her to her long enough, and if I'm successful to convince her of that, what if it, if I'm able to convince her of that, then I will get her and everything that comes with her. Her wifely duties, maybe children, I'll get I'll get her and everything that comes with her. Do you understand? Yes, sir. This like I told you, the path to divine power goes through the wisdom of studying women or the black woman. Your subconscious is like your woman. If you convince your subconscious that you got plenty of nothing and nothing's plenty for you, then your subconscious, like a woman, is going to produce a child. It's going to produce a reality that will give you what you desire or convince her of. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to wake up. It's just like women. Once your mother, once I convinced your mom through my actions, once she got the idea in her mind that, wait a minute, Kevin don't love me like I thought he did. He loves someone else, or he's not giving me what I really want. I thought he, once that got in her mind, once the idea was planted, it was only a matter of time before I was separated from my wife. Do you understand? Yes, sir. When black people listen to the devil, when black people listen to the white man and accepted the fact that they were slaves, accepted the fact that nothing was plenty for them, accepted the fact that when they die, they will go to heaven. Once they convinced their mind of that, they lost everything. Like a man losing his wife, when she accepts something that he's doing by word or by action. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is great wisdom in women. Hey, only a fool don't respect a woman. I have the greatest amount of respect of women on planet Earth. Believe me. Because you will yes, not sir. get this wisdom anywhere else. What you must do and remember is you got to you gotta forget the small things. You can't pay attention to the petty arguments I have with your mama. 
You can't pay attention to that. You got to look at the big picture. I had to suffer that to get the very wisdom I am giving to you right now. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A price had to be paid. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected, be divorced. That's a form of rejection. I didn't leave your mama. Your mama left me. I didn't reject her. She rejected me. That's rejection. I no longer want to be your wife. I no longer want to submit to you. That's called rejection. The son of man must suffer many things and be rejected. Do you understand? Yes, sir. sir. I'm not even allowed to set foot in your own in your house. That is called rejection. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. I've never had a girl. I've never known a woman or dated a woman who had an ex. And her ex came to see his old children, and she didn't allow her ex in the house to see to visit with his children. But I suffered that. I have suffered greatly to get the wisdom that I'm giving to you right now. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. Got to, you got to wake up. Like I was listening to Farrakhan and meeting today, and Mr. Ishmael was talking about, he called Louis Farrakhan the Messiah, and everybody know it, and they want to kill him. Do you realize who the devil is? <laughs> the white man the devil? Yes, yes sir. sir. Tell me, what black man did the white man wait to kill when he was in his 90s? That was a threat to him. How old was Dr. King when Dr. King got murdered? Approximately. How old was he? Yes. 30 something years old? Yes, sir. 30 in his 30s. How old was Malcolm X? In his 30s. How old was Marcus Garvey when he got kicked out of America? How old was Marcus Garvey? In his 30s? He was, yeah, Maybe in his old. 40s? Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How old was Noble True Ali when he got killed? He was in his 30s? Yes, sir. How old was Nat Turner when he got killed? Wasn't he young in his 30s or 40s? Wasn't he young in his 30s? Yes, sir. What about the man, Fred Hampton, of the Black Panther Party that they murdered in Chicago in his sleep? Was he an old man or was he a, a young man in his 30s? Yeah, how old was Trayvon Martin? Young boy. How old was How old was Rodney King? Young man. Young, right? Yes, sir. Do you see? I'm about to make a curse. Do you see how goddamn foolish these so-called black leaders? How they make the fools of our people? Yes, sir. You a fool if you think. Devil still plotting to kill you, and you pushing ninety years old. You a goddamn fool. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't say it no other way. You are a goddamn fool. Tell the people of Chicago that the white man trying to kill school is Farrakhan, and a man almost ninety years old. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He almost ninety years old, but he the Messiah. He's the Messiah, and he's 90 years old. How foolish are these things our people? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He does tell the truth. The white man know who the Messiah is. He's not going to tell you. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. Your mother got a job at the hospital. When your mother gets a check, she pays taxes. She pays Social Security tax. She pays state Louisiana state tax. She pays federal tax. She pays Medicaid tax. And all those taxes 
by the U.S. government have a department that collect that money. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is called the IRS. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, if you don't believe me, ask your mama. Do you think that the IRS is trying to figure out how much money to take from your mama, or is the IRS taking the money? Taking the money. Answer the question. And if you don't know, ask your mama. Ask your mama. Mama, have you had the IRS figured out how much they're going to take out your check? Right? Yes, sir. See if your mama tell you, oh, sweetheart, that they can't figure out how I owe. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She ain't going to tell you that, is she? No, sir. Because the American government has a system set up to get those taxes. They ain't trying to figure out nothing. They taking them. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Sister Rebecca, are you still here? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're just going to wait for them to get back in. Okay. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Well, they can, uh, the devil, the devil don't want me talking to y'all. Just Rebecca. Yes, now, sir. What was what what the, when when the when the American government set up the COINTEL program against the Black Power movement? What was the purpose of the of the COINTEL program, Sister Rebecca? The purpose was to weed out and uh, infiltrate. All the programs that black people were setting up. That was, to, uh, those were the strategies. But what was the overall the overall to, objective? To what destroy were they, the program. To, to be, destroy the program. Completely shut the it down. The purpose the purpose of the COINTEL program set up by the American government was to stop the rise of a black messiah. Yes, sir. What was the purpose of the COINTEL program, Sister Rebecca? To stop the rise of the Black Messiah. Now, they set up a whole government division for that. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, let me ask y'all a few questions. Did, does, not the American, does not the American government have a division for the military? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do the do the American military try to figure out how to kill people, or do they go kill people? They go kill, kill people. Do, does not the American government have what's called the the Congress? It does not. It does not Congress pass laws? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or do the Congress try to figure out how to pass a law? No, sir. Pass law. They pass laws, is that right? Yes, sir. Does not the American government set up public schools? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Are the public schools, do the public schools teach the children what the government wants them to know? Or are the yes. schools trying to figure out what to teach them? They They're teaching what the government wants them to know. They're not trying to figure it out, are they? No, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so when the government set up a program to stop the rise of a black messiah, and the black messiah is here, do you think that the government is still trying to figure out who the black messiah is, or do they know? They know. No. They know. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Do you do you know how far Virginia is from Washington, D.C.? It's not even 50 miles. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. So when the police are 
attacked me in 2013. Two police officers. I was right down the street, basically, from the White House. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when the police attacked me, how long? It is 2019. How many years have we been in America under the thumb of white people? Four hundred years. Four years. Four four hundred years, is that right? Yes, sir. So when the white man decided he was going to grab a nigga and burn him at the stake, he did it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the white man decided to hang our people from a tree, lynch them, he did it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the white man decided he was going to put a bullet in Dr. King's brains, he did it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's been doing it for 400 years, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me ask you this. How many times in school or anywhere else did you hear of that the white man went to kill a black man and they couldn't grab him? They couldn't lynch him. They couldn't shoot him. They could every time they try to touch touch the black man, their hands went right through him and they couldn't even touch him. How many times have you heard that? No. So let me ask you a question. If you set up a program to stop the rise of the black messiah, and you've been killing any black man in America that you want to kill for 400 years, you kill every black man you decided to kill, or you beat up every black man you decided to beat up. Every single time. In 2013, which is an unlucky number, when you came across this black man and you couldn't grab him, and you couldn't hit him, What do you suppose went through the mind of these white people? Crazy. Anybody? This is him? This is him. This is him. That's the Messiah. Is that right? Yes, Yes, sir. How many black people in America, not even, how many black men in America do you see walking around with a swastika on their forehead in America. How many have you seen besides One. me? Zero. Besides None. me? None. None. And I already taught you. I didn't teach it to you. The Chinese man told you in the video. The, the, the manji or swastika is a sign for the universal ruler. Is that right? Yes, sir. When Master Farad Muhammad was arrested by the Detroit police and they asked him who he was, did you know that Master Farad Muhammad told them people, he said that I am the ruler of the universe. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If Allah is the ruler of the universe, if Master Farad Muhammad is the ruler of the universe, then who is his son? If your daddy the ruler, then who's the son? The ruler. The ruler. Yes, He's sir. the ruler too. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Not only that, did you know that the swastika or manji is an Egyptian symbol? It is a, an, an Egyptian symbol of the sun. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you are aware of this knowledge or this occult knowledge, when you look at me, you will see a man with a sun on his forehead. Is that right? Yes, sir. Or you will see the son of man. Yes, sir. 
Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is so much more that I can teach you. There is so much more I can teach right now. But I think that's enough for you to chew on. I got, I got, I got plenty. I got plenty. I'm not talking about a different, I'm talking about what I'm talking about now. It it gets even deeper. This is our planet. And you need to get with that. You need to start feeling that. This is all yours. And he got it. And we got to get it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad was talking about the Indians. And the messenger was talking about our people, talking about, well, I, I, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna fight for the Indians because he take it from my brother. He take it from me. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, "The Indians. He was not smart enough to keep his home, so he let a stranger come and take it from him. Do you understand?" Yes, sir. And then the messenger said, "He said one thing. I can bear witness with the white man on." He wasn't doing nothing with it but hunting and fishing. Is that right? Yes, sir. And then the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, well, if the white man was going to come over here and build a great civilization that we are that we are uh, celebrating here today, then I say he should have came a long time before he did and took it from him. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, he said the white man should have been over here and came and took it from the Indians. He should have he should have came a long time and did it before he did do it. If he was going to come and build this great civilization with it, is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Now remember, he said he didn't hate the Indians. He said he loved the Indians, but he wasn't smart enough to keep his home. Is that right? Yes sir. Yes sir. He said, "Well, if that's the case, we got to have a land of our own." Is that right? Yes sir. Yes sir. He said the Indian was not smart enough to keep his home. So he let a stranger come and take it from him. Is that right? Yes sir. That's right. And then the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said this, talking about us in America, the Muslim, the black folks in America, the black Muslim. He said, we are strangers too. Is that right? (laughs) Yes, sir. Well, the messenger gave a hint to the wise. I'm here to make you wise. Now, when the messenger said that we are strangers to anybody, what did he mean by that? We are smarter than them. We are smarter than them. Anybody else? We can take their land. We're the rulers over them? We we going to what? Say that again? (laughs) Take their land. We're going to take their land. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, got some, I got some smart children, Sister Rebecca. Yes, sir. All right. What does the words, what tribe are we a member of? What's Shabbat. our tribe, Sister Rebecca? Shabbat. Anybody. What's our tribe? What does Shabbat. the word Shabbat, what does the word Shabbat mean? Greater taker. The greater taker. Is that right? Yes, sir. I ain't here to talk in cold. I ain't here to beat around the bush. We going to take America. So if you think, if you think I'm going to Ghana, if you think I'm running to Africa, I ain't going 
going nowhere. We taking America. Do you understand? Yes, sir. They ask the most honorable, so y'all might think I'm just talking stuff. They ask the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, where is the promised land? Ain't that right, Sister Rebecca? Yes, sir. What did he tell them? We're in, we're in it. This is the problem. He said land. you he said you he said you are walking around in it. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Huh. I I keep teaching. I can I can I can I can take you deep and I can keep taking you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to stop right there. All right, Rafi. Do we have any questions or comments before we close our Sunday school? Yes, One. I've been a very fast. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, This is a very wonderful prison, uh, wonderful Sunday school. An amazing lecture by the Son of Man. This has been a fantastic Sunday school, uh, Son of Man. Thank you so much for keeping us a, a, adrift on what 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 our goal is to do, what our plan and our purpose is. Thank you so much. Thank you, Son of Man, for teaching us today. Any other questions or comments? No, sir. Okay. We will close this Sunday school with the Muhammad children giving their farad prayers and their meditations to and yet they're Yaqub's meditations to Allah, starting with Daim. Surely I have turned myself, being a bright swim who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheist. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Excuse me for interrupting your prayer, son. Listen. Yeah, that's the title I made the video. So y- so Rafiq was correct in saying Yaqub's meditation to Allah. Um, before I before I spoke, who was just who was just reciting the prayer before I interrupted him? Who's reciting the prayer right now? Daim. And when Daim recites the meditation, is it not Daim reciting the meditation to Master Prophet Muhammad? Yes, sir. yes, sir. And when Rafiq Kamal Amaria do it, isn't that Kafiq Amar Amaria and Daim reciting the meditation? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. It ain't just my meditation, it's your meditation. So when you say we're going to have the Muhammad children get their prayer and, and recite, you can say they're going to recite their meditation to Allah. They're going to recite their meditation to Master Farai Muhammad. This is Daim's meditation to Master Farai Muhammad. This is, Daim, this is Rafiq Kamal Amaria's meditation to their God, Allah. Not only is the universe yours, the sun, moon, and star, Allah is yours too. Allah, Master Muhammad, is yours. And you are his. And you need to get with that and feel that. You are his. And he is yours. He belongs to you. He is our God. Ours. First. Before anybody else, he's ours first. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You need to get with that. I am a jealous servant servant of Allah. I am a jealous servant of Allah. He's mine first. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like that song with Monica and Brandy. The boy is mine. No, girl, he mine. No, uh, girl, he mine. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot, a lot is ours. The black man in America first. He's our God. Then he's the God to everybody else. But he's our God first. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, son of man, you just, you done did it now. You done tore it now. You just making it up as you go. No, I'm not. If Allah is not ours first then why is the black man and black woman of America the prodigal son who will be given rulership for eternity? 
every black person on the planet will not be given that right, that sovereignty, that gift. That is to be conferred on the black people of America only. We are the rulers of the other black people and every other people on the planet. Us and us only. Allah chose us. We are his favorite. Do you understand? Yes, Yes, sir. We are the apple of Allah's eye. We are the chosen people. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are Shabazz. We are the greatest takers. All right, Rafi. Yes, sir. Are there any other questions or comments? No, sir. No, sir. All right, we will close with the Muhammad children giving their Farad prayers and their meditations to Master Farad Muhammad, starting with Naeem. Surely I have turned myself, being a bright soul, who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am none of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and this am I commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, but none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, but none guides to the best of them but thee. And turns away from me the evil morals but thee. Amen. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I want not. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thy cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Surely I have turned myself being upright to him, <clears throat> who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am now of the polytheist. Truly my prayers, my sacrifices, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has seen, and this is my commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God for me. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against false of thee. And guide them to the best of morals, for none guides to the best of them but thee, and turns away from me the evil morals of thee. The Lord is my shepherd, I want not. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the pasture of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Surely I have turned myself to the fight to him, who is in the heavens and the earth, and I am now the polytheist. Surely my prayers, my sacrifices, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. No associate has seen, and this is my command, and I am of those who submit. O oh Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am my servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults. For none grants protection is false with thee, and me to the best of morals. For none grants to the best of thee, and turns away from me the evil morals of thee. The Lord is my shepherd, I want not. He maketh me to lie down in pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of wretchedness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth open. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. In the name of Allah, who appeared and is in the person of Master Farat Muhammad, I saw Malikum. Thank you.